Hello again and thanks very much for joining us here at Business Stories Making Headlines at this hour. I'm Michael Nath. The queues by motorists for premium motor spirit popularly called petrol in Lagos, Abuja and the environs gradually disappeared on Thursday as more filling stations joined in dispensing the product. It was however observed that some retail Outlets dispensed the commodity at rates above the approved 165 naira per litre price. And this came as the Marketers Association of Nigeria told our correspondent that they were not aware of any meeting between oil marketers and the Nigerian midstream and downstream regulatory authority. The NMDPR had stated on Wednesday it was meeting with oil marketers on issues bordering on the cost of petrol, payment of bridging claims and uh, other concerns in the downstream oil sector. The 36 states of the Federation parted with a sum of 21.62 billion naira as external debt deductions in the first quarter of 2022 an increase of 31.5% uh, from 16.44 billion naira deducted in the corresponding period of 2021. This is according to a data extracted from the Federal Account Allocation Committee report. Lagos, Kiduna and Cross River recorded the highest deductions in the review period with 7.27 billion naira, uh, 2.26 billion naira and 1.36 billion naira deducted respectively in first quarter of 2022. A total of 2.8 one eight trillion naira was shared amongst the different levels of government and various revenue generating units between January and March 2022. Notably, the state governments received 590.45 billion naira as gross allocation in the period under review, while the federal government received a sum of 720.21 billion naira in the same period. Also, the local governments shared 400 and 36.37 billion naira, while 145.4 billion naira was allocated to oil producing states as part of the 13% oil derivation fund. Now, the National Assembly will verify claims by many mid companies uh, that are shortlisted for the 375 born uh, Nigeria or Naira export expansion grant. This was disclosed by the Director General of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Isra Yakusak, during the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the NEPC and the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria in Abuja. According to Yakusak, the essence of the MOU between the two agencies is to expose Nigerian micro, small and medium enterprises to the West African market. It stressed that the agreement was another way of showing the general public the level of cooperation and synergy among related government agencies in boosting the Nigerian economy through the promotion of non-oil exports. On his part, the Director General Smidan Wale Fasonya uh, described the MOU as a marriage of two minds. Fasonya said Smidan was thinking out of the box, given that several SMEs found it difficult to access funds. He stressed that the agency was looking at programs where it would combine financial initiatives with capacity building. He disclosed that before the end of this year, Smidan and other partners would set up a microfinance institution to empower MSMEs. Now, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has canvassed for a pan-African position articulated and promoted by leaders of the continent on the global net zero emissions target by 2050 to 2060, saying such a position would further advance the quest for a just energy transition. Uh, Professor Oshimbajo stated this at a meeting with diplomats from the G7 countries. The Vice President spoke after a presentation of Nigeria's energy transition plan and brief comments by the diplomats and country representatives said the plan is geared toward the actualization of a pan-African initiative. Speaking specifically on the progress of Nigeria's plan, the VP 
said there is a great deal of enthusiasm and support for the country's energy transition plan. He said the federal government has adopted intentional approaches, including the setting up of an energy transition office, among other, to coordinate the processes. But the Debt Management Office has said Nigeria has been transparent with information regarding the country's public debt, reacting to reports that Nigeria failed the World Bank Disclosure Rule. The DMO, in a statement issued in Abuja, said the federal government of Nigeria is one of the countries that has imbibed the principles of uh, transparency in public debt. According to the Debt Management Agency, the website of the focal agency for this purpose, the DMO, is uh, frequented by uh, diverse individuals and institutions within and outside Nigeria, searching for information on Nigeria's public debt. Regarding some specific claims in the report, the DMO said the, the annual borrowing plan is contained in the annual budgets where the total borrowing is listed in three categories new domestic borrowing, new external borrowing, and drawdown bilateral and multilateral loans. It went to say that the public debt stock is published quarterly on the DMO's website. This is supported by the periodic uh, physical and uh, virtual media briefing sessions. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry has charged the federal government to implement a blend of fiscal, monetary and regulatory policies to achieve price and economic stability. President of LCCI, Michael Olawele Cole, gave the advice in Lagos at the Chamber's Economic and Business Outlook. Uh, Olawele Cole said the advice became imperative due to the Chamber's predictions that the country in the third quarter might experience uh, some fiscal constraints from the heavy uh, subsidy costs, debt overhang and servicing. He noted that the LCCI had earlier in the year projected a growth rate of 2.5% anchored on the assumption of sustained high oil prices, transition to a market reflective exchange rate system and gradual implementation of reforms in the oil sector. He, however, lamented that the worsening security situation in many parts of the country would continue to threaten agricultural production, manufacturing value chains, and logistics. The LCCI boss added that the Central Bank of Nigeria's uh, rate hike and uh, rising energy costs, including diesel above 800 naira per litre, jet A1 at 710 per naira per litre and PMS selling above the government regulated price might continue to aggravate production costs leading to restraint manufacturing and eventual job losses. The Nigerian Communications Commission has hinted that an increase in the price of telecommunication services such as calls, data and text message is unlikely, at least in the short term, despite the push by telecom operators to increase the cost of these services. It also said such proposals would have to go through various stages, including stakeholders, consultations, cost studies, among others. According to the Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer NCC, Professor Umar Dambata, the Commission is aware of how high diesel prices and lack of access to foreign exchange are negatively impacting telecom service providers. He said the, the NCC recently received a letter from the Association of Licensed Telecoms Operators of Nigeria describing the unfavorable working environment operators were faced with and their need to review the prices of services by 40%. Meanwhile, Nigerian Communications Commission has called on mobile network operators, internet service providers, uh, TAR calls, among others, to switch to alternative power source in the meantime, noting that the federal government is doing everything within its means to solve the energy crisis in the country. The executive vice chairman of NCC, Uma Dambata, said renewable energy, including solar energy, have uh, been recommended to MNOs, ISPs, among others, to deploy pending when diesel costs comes that decline in the cost of diesel findings uh, show that uh, tower costs and uh, other telecom service providers have been battling high energy costs in the country for about three months.